Hey everybody, this is Brian Gandy with Sustainable Trains and I am stoked to say that I have on my table today a Gavita 1700E. Uh, it's quickly becoming one of the most popular uh, horticultural LED fixtures out there on the market. Um, touted at 1700 micromoles, that's where the name comes from. I'm guessing they'll keep raising that number just like the 1930 with their top light. Um, we all know that Fluence kind of started this trend with the multiple bars. Uh, this has eight bars. And I will say, just immediate impressions, they've done a really good job with the build quality. It's all metal, uh, lots of waterproofing gaskets. And my favorite part so far is this fin on the top of the bars for heat sinking. Um, LEDs still need to dissipate quite a bit of heat and I'd say that Gavita spared no detail when they did this. They have a nice uh, fin on there that will create a nice laminar flow, help remove heat, and uh, it's crucial for the, the long life of the components to get the light rating out of the chips and electronic components involved. That's essential. So we are gonna do a full rundown and see what's under the hood and also check out the function of this E-Series adapter. All right, let's see what she's got. So right here on the printed circuit boards, it does say danger, high voltage. Most commercial horticulture LEDs are low voltage or class two, which means they only go, they're at 50 volts or less. So anything over 50 volts according to the certifying agencies is high voltage and puts it in a whole new class of safety. And um, generally, I mean, this isn't an easy thing to do engineering wise. Um, came up across this a couple years ago. So whatever they did to figure this out uh, was pretty crafty. And uh, while we're here, we'll just look and we can see this conformal coating one thing I noticed about it, it's just not even across the boards. It's like they run a bead down each side. But you can see that it's got that clear silicone coating that goes over all the chips and components. And um, these are the square, uh, probably Samsung LM301B or 301 h or that style of chip, high efficiency, high efficacy, high output. And it looks like they went with one color across the board, I would guess 4,000 Kelvin, and then supplement with the reds here, which in comparison to the Fluence picture, they actually did use a high output red instead of two lower outputs to compensate. So high build quality um, so far, looking like high grade components. First off, Let's look at the input voltage. This is 120 to 277, so this is going to be standard voltage. This is rated for 670 watts, which is slightly higher output than a lot of other fixtures available. And I like this little warning here. This makes me think I might be right about the high voltage. Warning, do not open. This product contains no serviceable parts or features. Um, it says it's suitable for wet locations. And uh, manufactured by Hawthorne, ETL certified to uh, UL standard 1598, which is not the horticultural standard. Again, I think it's going to be a workaround to see if they can run this high voltage. So in the housing, we've got three drivers, which is definitely unique in these type of fixtures. Two of them are 220 watts. One is 180 watts. So I'm guessing this one's for the reds and the other two are for the whites. Wago connectors, those things are not cheap. 
And there's a lot of them. So I'm guessing that's how they justify the ticket price. So why does this matter uh, that these drivers are high voltage? Um, I consider it kind of a breakthrough feat for these guys to pull this off for the safety reasons. Um, technically this high voltage above 50 volts is more dangerous to humans and ETL and UL and those electronic certifying agencies deem it unsafe and technically it can stop your heart a lot quicker than 48 volts or 50 volts. Um, so do not do this at home. It's recommended against on the other side of this fixture. Uh, do not do this. So this is a standard Meanwell 320H. This is a 54 volt. And you can see, I mean, you know, all things considered, it's not that much bigger. They could have put two of these inside of that chassis, but it would have um, only provided for, it's really smart to run an isolated channel just for the reds. To put the same chips in line based on how their voltages, their forward voltages and current works, it's actually better to have a dedicated channel for each color of chip. And um, yeah, uh, these are advanced by Signify. I want to say that's Philips. And uh, like I said earlier, two 220 watt and one 180 watt. Okay, so what I've done is disconnected two of the driver power leads here with this Wago connector. These have these little flip up things. I'll give you a close up version of that soon, but it's actually interesting. The red channel is not isolated. They've got the power supplies pared down so that the 220 watt drivers push three bars and then the 180 watt driver pushes two bars. So I'll hook up both of the 220s And I got a little taste of that high voltage, low current. Like I said, don't do this at home. It does not feel good. It is not safe. So, boom. Now we got the two 220 watts running. And you can see that these two bars are out. So if you ever have one power supply fail on one of these things, you're going to notice just that. If you're missing like a couple of bars... Um, that just stopped working, that means one of your power supplies crapped out. So these are Wheeland power connectors. This is an RST-16 and <clears throat> it clicks in really nice. I'll demonstrate that again when I hook up the power adapter. I gotta say, this does not breed confidence. It's locked in, but it's actually turning that whole thing. Kind of feels a little loose. And then to get these things off is kind of a trick. It goes in until it clicks. It's in there nice and sturdy. But then you got to really, yeah, it's broken in a little bit so it's easier now. But um, something to be mindful of if you're hooking up these things and disconnecting. This is not super secure. All right, so anyone in who's new to LEDs, or has started running on will tell you that you will almost absolutely have to dim them. Um, raising and lowering lights uh, may not even be an option if you're in a vertical style setup. If you want to dim this fine fixture, which I love the build quality, I love the innovation with the high voltage, you've got to have this $130 accessory, not even with a dimmer built into it. So you've got to have the controller, which has all these extra little parts, which is unbelievable. It's even got a little dummy plug in there for an RJ connector. Um, so if you were going to hook up an RJ cable, you have to pull all this out. And actually, in order to hook this thing up properly, you're going to have to splice on a cable. Let's see if we can figure it out, but this seems excessive, um, in my opinion. The reason that they have this is because high voltage power supplies don't like to be 
dimmed as easily or readily as a lower voltage power supply. And I'm going to see if we can get this thing rigged up to actually demonstrate the dimming. But $130 add-on just so you can dim. Okay, so I've got the E adapter hooked up. I just did one run through of this. I was like, that didn't make any damn sense. So I had to go back and actually read the instructions. And I'm still interpreting them. So this is the dummy plug right there that was in the adapter. And it says in the instructions, keep this in a safe place because it's required for standalone mode. Jesus, that's bright. All right, so there's that. And it'll turn it off when that's pulled out. They give you this RJ cable. And instructions on how to splice an RJ cable that you have to run through this end cap uh, like that so because this end won't fit so you actually got to cut it off splice it and then run all these series of connectors I mean just seems like a kind of a nightmare <clears throat> to wire a lot of these things up and I'm not sure if I'm going to do that let me take a look and see what's going to take to actually splice this and demonstrate the dimming but uh yeah I've got years of experience wiring stuff from car stereos to building LED lights and to me this seems excessive um, but I'm going to take a look and see if I can't get it running. Alright, I've done <clears throat> quite a bit of wiring in my day. And I am going to forego trying to splice an RJ cable and even demonstrate the dimming with my power supply. I did not buy the Gavita controller for this. So, it's kind of the end of the demonstration. But I will say, um, this thing is bright. I like how the red chips are offset. It's nice style, it's good for uniformity, but I gotta say that the dimming protocol, the E-Series adapter, um, splicing RJ cable, it's kind of beyond me, and I think that it would take forever to wire up a bunch of these in a facility. Um, excellent build quality, love the high voltage, they got that worker and I figured out. Um, I like that it's metal all the way around, there's no plastic on it, but yeah, this is a weakness. Uh, it costs a lot of money, and it's going to cost a lot of time and money when you go to install these things. So that's the Gavita 1700E. Um, I'll do some light mapping and all that stuff, but we know this thing's just a hoss on output. A few extra percentage points for running with a high voltage, so they're always going to lead on the efficacy game. Durability, who knows? I mean, if you have one power supply powering a fixture, you have one mode of failure. You have three power supplies, one fails. This is by their own definition on the warning flag, not serviceable. Uh, I guarantee you take it back to Hawthorne and do an RMA. They're gonna send it out. Someone's gonna pull that driver out, put a new one in, and they're gonna sell it as a refurb. Maybe we'll see some refurbs for a cheaper price down the road, but um, yeah, that's it for the 1700E.